Hi, this is Carla and welcome to day two of Faces Mini. Uh, yesterday we did some exercises where we didn't look at our um, drawing while we drew or we drew with our non-dominant hand and this took a lot of pressure off of what the final drawing looked like. And today we're going to go back to sort of real drawing looking and it's a tendency then to sort of freeze up um, and I'd like you to try to remember the um, feeling you had um, when doing the blind contours or when doing the non-dominant hand drawings of not caring so much of your outcome. Usually when you can relax like that your outcome is better. It's just kind of one of those human things um, I've found. So um, relax today as we move into drawing from uh, uh, contour drawings and from photo references. Um, what you'll need today is the worksheet that I have at the at the site. You'll need um, some cardstock for the one-liner exercise and for the main exercise we're going to be drawing from this photo reference and you'll need the other three pieces of paper that we used um, when we cut down for the non-dominant hand exercise. You'll also need a sharpie or some kind of pen, uh, two different colors of colored pencils and a pencil sharpener possibly. Okay so let's get started. These can move out of the way. We're going to just start with the worksheet. Okay, so um, it's the same idea as the blind contour. You're going to start drawing, you're going to pick an edge and then just very slowly uh, draw what you see. Like the non-dominant hand drawings, you're going to look at your reference about, you know, more often than you do your drawing. I usually recommend about a 60-40 split, 60% 60 here and 40% here. So you're able to look up and down, up and down, um, but you're still moving very slowly and you're still just trying to get the contour edges. So I'm just going to get started. I notice she has kind of a crown right at the top here, so I'm going to start there. I just sort of was trying to eyeball how far down to come for her hairline there. If you make an errant line, don't worry, just go back to where you were and correct it as best you can. These shouldn't take a whole lot of time, so they don't have to be perfect. They are in pen. They're not going to be perfect. <laughs> And you can let the negative space help you. This is the area behind her. And so as I move with her hair, I'm going to try to you know, keep about the same amount of space on the edge of mine that I see there. Again, looking at the negative space shapes, I can see I kind of didn't get this quite right. It's okay. Practice drawing. Okay, that's good enough for now. So you're going to do two each of her, two each of him, and two each of her for a total of six contour drawings. Uh, remember, you're picking an edge, you're slowly following those edges, and you're remembering to breathe. It can be um, very tempting to hold your breath, especially when you start uh, you know, feeling the pressure of doing 
a real drawing and um, have fun with that. So six of those. Uh, next, we're going to pull out our photo reference. So this is for our second drawing exercise. And for this, we're going to do an exercise, what I call one-liners. Um, this is an exercise I sort of copied from Picasso and Alexander Calder and, and, and Paul Clay, who loved to draw with one line to explore, drawings made with just one line, not lifting your pen from the paper. Um, usually these are done, or at least they did them, and I've done them a lot with, from imagination. But today, we're going to do six one-line drawings of this man's face. So. Um, the idea with one-liners is once you put your pen to paper, you don't lift it until it's complete. Um, another uh, rule I like to sort of impose on the one-liners is that they're done in sort of one fluid motion. And also that you don't stop and try to retrace lines. Um, you want your three-year-old niece or nephew to be able to um, take their finger and follow the one line the whole way. It should look like a one-line drawing. It should not look like this. It should look like a, a sort of a cartoony, you know, stylized version of this. So I'm going to just do one as uh, one or two as a sample, and then I'll have you do six of these. So this one sometimes it takes me a little bit, you know, of of nerve to, to sort of commit myself. But here I go. I'm just going to just go. I got his hat and then his brow. I'm going to do his glasses. Again, I'm not worried about anything. Um, if I get stuck, I just do my best to to go back, kind of want to get in there with his eyes, and maybe that line is, okay, that's one. They should be quick. It was about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, that's it. I'll do one more and then I'll send you on your way with these. <laughs> this one. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, not perfect drawings, but the main point is to um, really start to look at these um, features and where they um, where they fall, and get that into your heart. And you might find also that these one-liner drawings are kind of fun and funny, and it might be something you work into your work later. So I always love to give that exercise. Okay. So for the third part of your assignment today, we're going to stay, keep our reference and get out the colored pencils, the eraser, and the paper. <laughs> it fell on the ground. Okay. So I'm just going to start. Um, this drawing, we're going to go for realism. We're trying to get a likeness. Um, but I do want to really emphasize that these are practice drawings and um, we get better and better and then we get rusty. We don't draw for a while and we have a hard time and then we get better again. Um, you know, and then there's lucky days where we just hit it and we don't even know how we did it. So just remember that the drawing, it's not sort of like, um, it's, it's very uh, dependent on lots of factors, and you don't always hit it. Um, I certainly don't. Um, I'm just going to get started. I'm going to use the negative space around this um, image to help me block in his um, face. And I'm going to spend about five minutes on this drawing. And I'll use two colors just to keep it interesting for me. But basically, I'm just going to get started. You can be sketchy with it if you like. I do, ten I am kind of drawing a little bit lighter as I try to sort of work out my proportions. Uh, 
I'm going to make mistakes. That's what humans do. So it might take a little while for this to, for you to block in your, your, you know, basic shapes. Um, I, I know that there are formulas for faces. Um, I've read about it and um, I kind of know in the back of my head that, you know, the eyes come halfway down from the head and the nose is supposed to be in the middle of that and the mouth in the middle of that. But, um, I kind of try to forget that <laughs> because um, I found that that even if you just move your your head down a little bit, suddenly those relationships are skewed, and he's got his head down a little bit, and so his chin, the 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 space between his chin and the nose are not equal, and so I really prefer to really just look at what I'm trying to draw and try to capture the character of that person in the pose that they're in. And um, so I'm, I really encourage you to kind of throw some of those rules out the window because they don't always, um, they don't always work, especially if somebody is looking down or looking up or, um, or in a position, you know, that's not straight on and perfect. So I'm just going to block in his eyes here and then maybe move on to another color. Um, the it's hard to draw and talk at the same time, I'm finding. Um, yes, when I teach drawing, as soon as people are really concentrating, it gets very quiet. So um, it does take some kind of concentration. Um, Here's another example of, you know, a rule not necessarily working with this particular photograph. I mean, when you look at, when you usually draw um, a straight on portrait of somebody, there's a neck, right? Well, in this case, um, the way he's posed, the neck is completely um, not visible. And, um, and so another reason to really just try to draw what you see and rather than what you think you know about a face. Um, I'm going to go in now with some blue just to kind of um, give myself something, a fun, a fun, <laughs> just a little bit more fun. Um, I might, now that I've got my um, basic shape in there and I'm pretty okay with, you know, the lightness, I can move a little faster usually or a little more confidently. Um, so I'm going to work on this for about five minutes. Um, I don't want you to spend much longer on it because, again, these are practice drawings. You're really trying to just practice trying to um, draw what you see and spending more time work looking at your reference than your drawing, um, realizing and accepting that you're going to make mistakes. I mean, this ear, um, you know, I've completely botched this ear, and even this ear is a little bit too big um, and not the right shape, but we just keep trying. And then there's also the part of you don't need to belabor it forever and ever. Um, we, it's kind of like a conversation. We say something, it's a little bit of a blunder, we move on. It's not as if we're just gonna, you know, try to restate ourselves over and over and over again. Um, so do three of these, working um, with two colored pencils, um, trying to get a likeness, but limiting yourself to about five minutes each so that, um, you know, you just have to cut your losses and move on uh, after that. So your assignment today is to do three of the, well, we'll start from the beginning. We'll, we'll do six um, contour drawings on the worksheet, six one-line drawings from this photograph, and then three um, realistic portraits, five-minute portraits from the photograph. Um, have fun. Don't worry if they're not um, perfect. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're just practicing drawing here. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.